So here is a quick rant. Now, if you've been watching a lot of my videos, you'll note that they're very commodity centric. I'm not a commodity guy. In fact, I've steered away from commodities for, for decades, essentially. However, you trade what you see. And when you see opportunity, you look at it and then you see whether you should take a position or not. And now it's glaring to me that commodities is the big thing and it's here now. Now, back in the day, people talk about commodity super cycles and yeah, you know, there might be a little bit of a cycle, but they weren't really super cycles. And commodities do what they do, which is every now and again, they go up like a rocket and down like a rock. It can be chocolate, I'm talking about it's cocoa. It can be any commodity, it can be zinc, it can be nickel, it can be, you know, whatever commodity you care to mention. At some point, it goes ballistic and then it falls down heavily again. And in fact, over the last few years, I've said it to a number of people, look, all the commodities are gonna go up like a rocket and down like a rock. It's just a question of which one is gonna go next. And we've seen quite a lot of them do that. However, now, this is something completely different. What we're going to see is commodities repricing full stop. And that's because of AI and the AI boom that's on its way, which is basically just raw materials plus energy equals AI. Yes, you know, they're making clever equipment. Yes, the software involved. But when you look at these huge plants, they're basically factories without any workers. And energy goes in one end, heat goes out the other, and all your little AI comes out of a tiny little glass tube, which is an optic fiber and goes into the world. And that's what a service center is. And they're building them like crazy. And they're budgeting right now $1.5 trillion to build them out in the US alone. And it's going to suck up so many raw materials, basic raw materials, hard commodities, that the whole sector is going to reprice. Now, one of the reasons for that is Let's just say you went out your back garden, found out it was the biggest copper mine in history, and you got all the rights um, to that copper. It would take you five to 10 years, maybe longer, depending on how difficult um, the area you're working in is, to turn that into a copper mine. Five to 10 years. At an absolute rush, five years. Normally, 10 years. And if you're you know, up a mountain somewhere in the middle of nowhere, or the government's not very friendly, or there's all sorts of argy bargy going on, 20 years. So, this rush for commodities is not gonna be satiated quickly. Yeah, the old story that the solution to high prices, high prices, will not work that quick because there simply won't be the resources to come on stream quick enough to keep up with the demand, even if they're there in the ground. So for me, the way to go is as follows stake out all the commodities, all the hard commodities that is. I haven't a view on the soft commodities. I don't have a view on, on corn and sugar and all that lot. But the hard commodities, any metal that you can watch. Oil, that's, that's a hard commodity too in my book, although it's not a metal. Any of those commodities at some point are gonna go vertical. It's just a matter of when. Just pull out a list of all the commodities and kind of sketch out what you think is going to happen to them and when you think it's going to happen to them and what will be the process and stake them out. Now, gold and silver, the precious metals are on the way. They've probably got a lot further to go for one reason or another. A little bit of China versus America conflict, or rather a lot of bit of America versus China conflict, but also a fair amount of AI is pushing that price, particularly with silver, which is going to be quite a big thing in AI then moving right along, you've got copper. Now, copper has begun to move, but where the ceiling is on copper, I have no idea, but it's a lot higher than where it is today. And then when you look down the list, you soon get to aluminium. Now, aluminium, there's absolutely no shortage of aluminium. You know, half the world's crust is made out of aluminium. It's not half, but I mean, it's, it's several percentages. So there's no shortage of aluminium. But aluminium does not want to be a metal because to get metal, it has to have basically a huge amount of potential energy. And the way that the world works and chemistry works, the world is always trying to break it down into oxide. And if you actually light aluminium, which you can if you try hard enough, you know, it really burns. It's kind of like the junior version of magnesium. Aluminium 
it's not about the shortage of, of raw materials for aluminium, it's all about energy necessary. Now, it needs a lot of energy, and energy is going to be in deficit coming up at some point in the next 10 years. And we're already starting to see that. So to make aluminium, you're going to need a lot of energy. And energy is going to get more and more expensive. So aluminium is going to get more and more expensive. So that is an interesting dynamic. At some point, the price of aluminium is going to go up quite a bit. And it might simply just be on the basis of the cost of energy to actually make it. Aluminium will also be a substitute metal for copper. It can't really do too much of the heavy lifting to substitute for copper, uh, maybe 25% of the demand, but the demand for copper is going to be so great that it's only going to chip away at the copper price. But nonetheless, aluminium will be, like all the other hard commodities at some point, is going to go vertical. And that is something that I'm watching. Now, have a look at this chart. At the bottom line, I go, aluminium's not going to go anywhere, not for quite a long time. And then I look at this chart and I go, ooh, a few years ago it could go there. Well, why couldn't it go there again in the not too distant future, before it takes that big run up that we're going to see with all commodities? We'll see copper do that run before we see aluminium. But aluminium is definitely worth staking out. So I've said this in a few videos. The way to go is not to go, Oh, my mate said, this has gone up a lot. It's going to go up more. Oh, jump in. Or, oh, I've just had a brainwave. I'm going to jump in. Have a brainwave, then watch. Just sit there and watch and wait and wait for the right things to come together or for a trigger before you jump in. And then don't necessarily jump all in or in with the big position. Just build it up because these things, well, if you're trying to trade things that are going to jump up and that's it. Well, you know, that, that's not the game I'm playing. And I hope that's not the game you're playing because that way, you know, madness and losing all your money lies. Stake out something like aluminium. And I am staking out aluminium. And that's the next one on my list. Now, further down the list is oil, of course, because um, somebody said to me, well, but won't they be using gas? And the point is all energy is fungible. You know, a kilowatt is a kilowatt is a kilowatt. So if everybody needs to burn gas for something and therefore they're paid to pay a lot more permanently, the price of oil will go up because people will be substituting into oil. Now, my view, and this is probably going to be very, very controversial, my view is that there's not going to be enough electricity. That's going to be really tight supply. Yes, they're building nuclear power, but how many years does that stuff take to put together? That, that's almost decades. So to actually keep up with energy needs, that's going to be a really hard scrabble. AI is going to be pulling hard on all electricity supply and electricity is going to go up, going to go up quite a lot. What that means is electric cars, and this is going to be very controversial, electric cars are not going to be in fashion because the electricity is going to want to go to AI. And that means that if you look at allocating your resources, you're going to say electricity, that goes to AI, Cars, they get gasoline. So there's going to be a return to the internal combustion engine or certainly a much slower transition to electric cars. Obviously, the hybrid is going to be a thing, but cars are going to be powered by gasoline, diesel, etc., not directly by electricity. And that has implications for oil. And at some point, oil is going to go mental. Not today, not tomorrow, not next month, but at some point. And we all should be staking our oil, looking for the early signs of something about to break out. Now, I think that's probably a couple of years away. I might be wrong. But, of course, we can sit there and watch. At some point, oil is going to go very, very north from here. So that's something else to stake out. In conclusion, the liquidity crisis that we had a couple of weeks ago, that's over. So now it's a run up to Christmas. We'll see what's going to go on there. I think it will probably be quite positive. And I think the precious metals will carry on being bullish. And this video is all about aluminium. Just keep an eye on it. Aluminium is worth watching. Something that's probably going to happen to aluminium next year. And I'll be sat there studying it closely. And when I have any ideas, guess what? 
I'll be on here telling you about that. Thank you very much, members. You're really, really appreciated. And there'll be more members special videos for you coming up as well in the not too distant future. And stick around in a couple of days. There'll be another rant for you to listen to. See you then. Bye now.